How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here and just like I said I'm back to the the ponds. Uh, these vernal pools are active but not quite as active as I thought they would be today. It rained all day yesterday and most of the night. It was loud. You could hear peepers all over the place and uh, there's definitely wood frog activity and spring peepers going on now but not quite as much as I thought. Part of that's because it's so bright out even though it doesn't look it and uh, so let's see what there is. Of course, the caddisfly larvae are active, and they're incredible creatures in their own right. I mean, these are insect architects. It's the larva form of the caddisfly, and they use the leaves, twigs, and debris to construct houses that they live in and carry around as they go about feeding and, you know, their daily activities or nocturnal activities. Really cool creatures, and I have a video about them. I'll give you the link. Okay, so being 5.30, there is a ton of traffic going back and forth on this road, and it's rather distracting to the video. But I gotta tell you, this location isn't quite as exciting as I thought it would be today. After all that rain yesterday, and you know, fog throughout the night, the temperature is actually almost 70 degrees, and that might be one of the reasons why. You can hear a lot of spring peepers. There are wood frogs and several spotted salamanders. The wood frogs are over on private property, and I can't access that. That's what it's like working with nature and wildlife. You know, you can spend days looking for something and not really have much luck and then just turn a corner and it's paradise. You know, coming to vernal pools and wetlands, you're just taking a gamble. One minute there could be tons of activity and then the next minute it's just almost dead quiet. Uh, that's part of the excitement. It's like a scavenger hunt. That being said, let's head out to another location. I get really frustrated when I see habitat flipped and not replaced the way it was. It's just one of my big pet peeves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The only time I ever really find a ton of spotted salamanders at once is when I'm, you know, checking out the vernal pools. Every once in a while I'll find a couple under a log or something, but this probably marks the most I ever found under one log. Not yet, not yet. I don't want to squish you. Well, I wasn't planning on saying a whole lot about any of the species in this video, but when I find this many spotted salamanders under one log, I've got to say something. This is pretty cool. Cool thing about spotted salamanders and turtles and various other animals out there is if you look at the spots on their backs, 
each one has its spots arranged in a very unique pattern. Those patterns are so unique, they serve as a bit of a fingerprint for identifying individuals. So it's always fun to take a picture of them when you find them so that you can see if you find the same individuals more than once or in successive years. During breeding season, the males have, well, swollen cloaca. That area swells up. That's where their reproductive organs are found. It's not swollen on the females. Okay, so as you could tell, it's getting dark. Um, I got distracted. I just met some people and we were talking for like 20 minutes or so. I was telling them about wildlife and um, you know what's happening right now and showed them a picture of spotted salamanders from a different location, of course. And uh, it was pretty cool. So uh, Scott, if you see this video, it was nice talking to you guys. Hope you have a good time watching the video and having fun going on your walks. The peepers are singing strong. Hopefully, you know, in a few minutes, the wood frogs will come out and start doing their thing. So be patient, bear with me. I'm gonna have some fun with these spring peepers. So of course, I've had to turn down my microphone sensitivity because of all these spring peepers, they're so loud. It was actually redlining my audio levels. So now my voice is quieter. I'm pretty much shouting right now. That's how loud these peepers are. Check out these awesome eggs. I'm guessing they're from some kind of assassin bug. I'm not really sure. Maybe a wheel bug, but some kind of assassin bug for sure. That is too cool. Say you found a little frog and you're not entirely sure whether or not it's a spring peeper, there are several features that help you narrow it down. For starters, spring peepers are pretty small. The males reach about an inch long, whereas the females can be up to about an inch and a half or so. They happen to have a wide range of colors though. Um, they could be anywhere from brown or gray or tan or beige. I tend to find a lot of orange or even pink ones, and they look really cool. Most spring peepers, however, have a characteristic brown X-like pattern on their back. You find a frog that fits all those characteristics, then you've probably found a spring peeper. So I actually had to walk a bit of a distance from the pools over here just so you can hear me. But I was trying to say that the wood frogs are sexually dimorphic. That means that the males and the females are look a little bit different from one another. The female wood frogs are larger and they're an orange or tannish color, whereas the males are smaller and they're a drab grayish brown. Uh, the reason for the females being larger as in most reptiles, amphibians, fish, and insects, and things like that, is the larger body allows them to either hold more eggs or develop their young longer so that they grow a bit bigger before birth. In the case here, that means holding more eggs. I'm finding more fishing spiders tonight than I actually expected this early in the year. That clearly tells me that these individuals have overwintered. I mean, how else could they be so big so soon? This is a Dalamedes tenebrosus. I love these ones, and I have a funny video where I'm basically trying to handle one. 
This is a six spotted fishing spider. I also have a really cool video on these guys and uh, I show them diving underwater and stuff. The hairs all over their body trap air giving the spider a very silver appearance when it's underwater. Really cool. The spider keeps trying to catch various water invertebrates and it's not having the best time. I'm trying to film it in slow motion but I'm not really happy with the image quality. It's better than nothing. It's still pretty cool looking. Now if you listen closely, I swear, it's not my stomach growling, that's actually the call of the pickerel frog. Pickerel frogs seem to love to do their call either under the water or just below the surface. That and the fact that they also seem to really like the cluttered areas. I just love the markings on pickerel frogs and usually that brown is actually a really bronzy color and it looks really cool in the light. And this species is actually kept in a group known as grass frogs. So you can find them relatively far from water as long as it's not too dry and there's plenty of grass and cover about. Okay, real quick, I might as well talk about it right now, but there's an easy way to tell the difference between green frogs and bullfrogs. You take that large disc-like eardrum thingy that's called the tympanum. Now locate that ridge that wraps around the tympanum and down towards the belly. That is textbook bullfrog. On green frogs, that ridge, it pretty much just travels straight on down the back. And that's a strong characteristic of the green frogs. You take a look at that and you know right off the bat whether it's bullfrog or green frog. So I pretty much found almost all of the frog species in my locale this week, especially tonight. We've got the wood frogs, of course the spring peepers, both green frogs and bull frogs, and even the pickerel frog. The only thing I haven't filmed in the past couple of days are the gray tree frogs and the American and Fowler's toad. Okay, so there we go. You know, it's been a, a fun few days. Uh, needless to say, I am exhausted. I'm sore. I'm tired. I mean, just last night alone, I was out for nine hours. But it was well worth it. I found the staple amphibians for the breeding season. I found the wood frogs uh, at all three locations that I went to. Uh, but the pools were deeper this year. And so the frogs were towards the middle and I didn't quite get the shots I'd want, but I film them every year. Uh, spring peepers, of course, everywhere, even now in this blaring sunlight. And a lot of spotted salamanders, but I'd include many of them in this video because, again, I film them every year. Uh, it's well worth it, though. Really good time. Lots of invertebrate activity and stuff. And uh, it's really cool. Right now, it is in the 70s. Mid to high 70s, believe it or not. And uh, I think that's why this breeding season was a bit different than previous years because the winter got pushed a little bit later and then it got warm really fast and that's affected things. Um, it's affected the amphibians, you know. It's all good. Something I got to say though is if you find spotted salamanders or any herbs really, the best thing to do is you don't tell anybody where they are um, because as you can tell they're dwindling, the populations. Some of that's because of pollution and habitat loss and pesticides and stuff. But another culprit is habitat destruction. A lot of people are flipping logs and rocks, they're not returning them, and it takes a couple years for the pH under those things to be just right. Another thing is a lot of people are piling stones up in the woods artistically and stuff, and that just destroys the habitat. 
please don't do that. I know it looks cool, but it kills so much diversity. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. Thanks for being patient and bearing with me. And, uh, well, happy hunting. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.